and welcome to Just One More Watch and welcome today to my review of what I think is at long last the perfect Orient Bambino. It has taken a while for us to get here though, hasn't it? I mean, the Bambino is certainly not a new watch. These have been around for close to a decade. Indeed, the Bambino was the second watch I ever reviewed on the channel back in 2016, recording as I was on my old mobile phone and using a desk lamp for lighting. What a horror show. I did have a few complaints about it at the time, including the 21 mil lug width, and the mineral crystal, which I ended up scratching really, really badly. And at 40.5 mil, it's always been a little bit large for what it is, if you see what I mean. That diameter dimension, the awkward lug width, and the fact that it's all dial combined to give us a dress watch that's a little bit too big to be properly dressy. No problem, Orient are a big company, they've had plenty of time to produce a number of incarnations of the Bambino. Indeed they have, we are now up to the version five. But instead of getting smaller, they got bigger with the V4 peaking at an even more ungainly 42 mil in diameter. They did have a crack at making a smaller version a couple of years ago with a 36 mil, but they labeled it as a ladies watch at launch, which I think is such a dreadful idea for brands to do. It means that a lot of guys just won't touch it after that. Apart from anything else, they were almost impossible to buy. I tried, I failed, I gave up. Fast forward to 2022 and they're releasing finally the size of Bambino. They should have probably released five or six years ago, a 38 millimeter version. And I must say, it's lovely. Now, Orient don't actually sell directly here in Australia. So I bought mine from big time, big time, big time watches out of Singapore. I paid full price for this, it isn't a sponsored video, but I do know the owner of the shop who has set me up with a 5% discount affiliate code. I will leave that code and a link in the description of the video. Big time ship globally, but please note the discount is only valid if you are in Australia, New Zealand, or Singapore. So the questions today are, was this 38 millimeter model worth the wait? And should you immediately dump your old Bambino and buy one of these instead? Let's flip the camera and find out. Okay, so this is now my fourth encounter with the Orient Bambino. I bought three for myself and borrowed a fourth. First up, there was the OG, the version one black and rose gold that I made that old school dodgy video about back in 2016. A couple of years later, I bought a V4. Now this was the Bambino Trap video. I will talk about what I meant by that a little later on. Now I bought the V4 knowing that it was gonna to be too big for me personally, but to have a look at it anyway, I bought it used and sold it shortly after the video. I then had a look at Ashley's small seconds. This was a bit of a looker and back to the smaller 40.5 mil case size. So I feel I'm reasonably well equipped to talk about this 38 and whether it is indeed the perfect Bambino or should that be the perfect Bambino for me? One thing I did notice is an improvement in the packaging. Previous Bambinos have all shipped in the standard small box, the same one supplied with Rays, Kamasus, etc. This new 38 comes in a long box, allowing the watch to be stored flat in transit. I think it's a little more upscale than the old box, but then again, this one is a little more upscale in terms of price. I will also circle back to the price a little later on. But let's start as I usually do with the all important set of dimensions. You know one of them already, 38 mil in diameter. Thickness is 12.6, lug to lug a very compact 43.8 and hallelujah, they've gone conventional with a 20 millimeter lug width for this smaller case size. Weight on the supplied leather strap is a very modest 54 grams. So let's have a quick look at that leather strap then. It certainly has a familiar feel to it, that feel being shiny and stiff. The lug width may have changed, but it looks and feels identical to the strap they've been fitting to Bambinos since time immemorial. Having said that, I don't hate it. Full croc, but genuine leather, semi-patent shiny upper surface, but with a raw untreated lower surface, which is good for comfort and you can see the all important zero following the two. I think this shade of brown actually goes well with the dial color that I chose, but this one will just eat straps for breakfast, even more so if you opt for the plain white or plain black versions of the watch. 
Case finish is very simple. It's a retro style watch, so we have that three piece construction with quite a slim mid case and a brushed finish, fixed angled high polished bezel, and that big domed mineral crystal jutting out of the top of it. That's always been a bit of a Bambino signature, hasn't it? The crown has the Orient logo on it, it's only push pull. And this smaller Bambino, like all of the others, only has 30 meters of water resistance. It is only mineral crystal, but I'm not going to complain too much at this price. You do have to be careful with it, therefore, if you are used to wearing watches with Sapphire or, dare I say it, G-Shocks. You know, it's not going to take the same level of abuse. I put a huge gouge in my original black and gold one, so yeah, take it easy. It does look good though, as you can see here. I'm deliberately showing you the light play and distortion that you get from certain angles. I highly doubt there is any AR undercoating to this crystal, but again, that's not really important for this style of watch. The movement is an Orion in-house caliber F6724. Again, this has been powering Bambinos now for several generations. 22 joules, hacking and hand winding, roughly 40 hour power reserve. It's undecorated as you can see, but they have at least graced it with a semi-skeletonized rotor. It's a little bit noisy in operation and the hand wind is certainly not the smoothest, but it is definitely more refined than the rough old donkey that was the caliber 48743 powering the V1s. But enough of that, look at how pretty this dial is. They've played around with the Bambino a lot over the years, given that there are now five different generations of it. Personally, I've always thought the simpler the dial, the better with them, especially in this smaller size. I was never a massive fan of the ones with Roman numerals on them, for example. I still think that the earliest versions are the prettiest versions, even if they do have that donkey caliber in them. There are four different color variants of this new 38 mil available at the moment anyway. White dial, black dial, both with stainless steel case, white dial with gold hands and gold coated case. This was my personal choice though, obviously steel case, but ivory slash apartment dial and blue handset. They are not massively noticeably blue though. I have to say under most lighting conditions, they look black, frankly, meaning that legibility is pretty good. As you can see here though, when I move the watch around, when they do catch the light right, you can see a dark blue hue from the Dauphine hands but they're not nearly as vibrant as the hands on the Orient Star that I reviewed earlier this week. I'm not complaining though, as I think tonally this one works well. Blue hands, ivory dial, brown strap. And note how the handset on the Bambino is actually longer than on the Star. I think they're very well proportioned, not something you can say about other Bambino variants from the past. Arrowhead indices are applied, double at 12 and half at the three to make way for the date complication. The date is thankfully relatively unobtrusive. They haven't gone with an ivory colored date wheel, which would have been nice, but I still think it looks okay. The Orient logo is, I believe, foil pressed above the printed brand name and automatic above the pinion and water resistant in italic font beneath it. Overall, classic mid-century looks and finally mid-century proportions. It looks great now on wrist as well, or should I say on my wrist anyway. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference and I do tend to enjoy this size of watch. It just looks right and it also feels right on me, I think. Lug to lug of less than 44 mil opens this one up to pretty much anybody that fancies it. 12.6 mil is definitely not slim, but a fair chunk of that is the crystal and at 55 grams, it is far from bulky. When I pull back a little to give you a different perspective, again, I think the proportions are pretty much spot on, something I've never been able to say about a Bambino before now. And the pocket shot to finish, I'm wearing a long sleeve jumper today as opposed to a shirt, but yeah, that whole slipping under the cuff thing will not be an issue with this one. Again, here you see a nice bit of light play from the dome crystal. I don't think that looks like a $200 watch, do you? The Bambinos have always looked much more expensive than they actually are. Moans and niggles then. If it's perfect, then this is gonna be a short section, isn't it? Well, it is gonna be fairly brief, I'll be honest. The movement isn't particularly refined, but in reality, that's barely noticeable once you get it on wrist. 30 meters of water resistance isn't a lot, but it's probably enough. And should they have gone for 19 millimeter lug width? Would that have made the proportions even more perfect? Nah. I'm only kidding. I'm delighted they went with a conventional size this time. The supply strap is perfectly serviceable, but I can see a lot of people switching these over for that Epsom style, Hermes style, you know, slightly slimmer than this one. But what of the Bambino trap of my previous video? 
Well, these watches are awesome if you wear this style of watch. How often do you have occasion to wear this style of watch though? Will this mid-century aesthetic clash horribly with your selection of Hawaiian shirts, for example? Of course, that applies to any watch, but these are so pretty and such good value, it's tempting to pick one up without thinking about whether or not it will become a regular part of your rotation or end up lurking in a box. And then there's the price. These aren't cheap at the moment because of supply and demand, I guess. I paid over 300 Aussie for this one. That's roughly 220 US dollars. This seems to be the going rate for these 38s, regardless of where you get them from. You can pick up an older 40.5 mil version for well under 150. So this new 38 is 50% more expensive, therefore. I'm sure the price will go down eventually, but I reckon there'll be a premium on these 38s for quite a while. So is this the perfect Bambino then? Well, it's definitely the perfect Bambino for me. The size is perfect and the colors on this particular model are perfect as far as I'm concerned. It wears so much nicer on my average size wrist than the 40.5 did. It finally has the proportions to go with the looks. Is it the perfect Bambino for you though? Well, if you have or have had a Bambino in your collection already, but have always felt it was a bit too large, then maybe it's worth your while picking up a 38. However, if you already have an older model that you do wear regularly, then that answers your question, doesn't it? Just keep what you've got and spend the money on something else. And if Orient's past can predict Orient's future, then there will be no doubt loads of different versions of this one, the 38 with different dial colors, different handsets, etc., etc., coming our way before too long, hopefully at slightly reduced prices. So there you have it, the perfect Bambino. Well, perhaps not quite perfect, but certainly the best Bambino that I have got my hands on to this point. If you don't already have one of these watches, this is the one to get. Up to this point, the small second was my previous favorite variant. Why not check out my review of that one? But if you wanna see where it all began and have a look at that ropey old first video, click over here. Thanks for watching this one. I will see you again in a future one, I hope.